Ed Gordon, who interviewed the president this past week, now takes a closer look at Kamala Harris. Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. In 2003, underdog Kamala Harris won the district attorney election for the city of San Francisco. Most important things don't come easy. <laughs> Her victory marked the start of a political career that certainly would not come easy. Kamala Devi Harris was born in 1964 in Oakland, California. Her mother, Shamala Gopalan, was from India, and her father, Donald Harris, from Jamaica. I was raised by a mother who said um, many things that were life lessons for me, including don't you ever let anybody tell you who you are. You tell them who you are. She grew up in Berkeley, California, where her parents were both academics and activists who participated and raised their children within the civil rights movement. Harris graduated from Howard University in 1986. I chaired the Economic Society. I was on the Howard debate team. She then graduated from law school from the University of California Hastings in 1989, and public service was her calling. If you want to pass Proposition K, you're going to have the exact opposite effect. After serving seven years as the district attorney of San Francisco, in 2010, she was elected attorney general for the state of California. She broke barriers as the first black and South Asian woman to hold the position, which she did for six years before she stepped into national politics. Attorney General Kamala Harris just made it official. She is running for U.S. Senate. We know this is the first open Senate seat we've had in almost a quarter of a century. In 2016, she ran for Senate in California, and she won. I intend to fight for truth and transparency and trust. And it didn't take long for her fight to be felt in Washington, D.C. Uh, Attorney General Barr, has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh, yes or no? Could you, could you repeat that? With her insistent inquiries and commitment to progressive policies, presidential buzz was quickly building around her and she made it official in 2019. I stand before you today to announce my candidacy for President of the United States. Her announcement rally in Oakland drew nearly 20,000 people and her campaign quickly gained momentum. And those folks don't want a wall, they want a paycheck. So let's be clear about what should be the priorities of this administration. Get Harris's most notable moment came during a primary debate with Joe Biden over his opposition to federally mandated busing. You also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. But her campaign soon began to stall. Her record as a prosecutor in California at times was at odds with the direction of the party. And before long, the momentum she had was gone. It is with deep regret, but also with deep gratitude, that I am suspending our campaign today. However, she would soon be on a new campaign. I have no doubt that I picked the right person to join me as the next Vice President of the United States of America, and that's Senator Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris! Just months after her own campaign fell apart, Kamala Harris was on the presidential ticket with Joe Biden. I accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States of America. And in November of 2020, Joe Biden was elected the 46th president. We did it, we did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. With Kamala Harris making American history as the first female black and South Asian vice president. I, Kamala Davy Harris, I solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all. In her role as vice president, she initially seemed to struggle to find her footing. Yes, At first, she was assigned the immigration crisis, but she found her voice when Roe versus Wade was overturned. Today in America, one in three women of reproductive age live in a state with an abortion ban. 
Since Roe was overturned, I have met women who have had miscarriages in toilets because they were refused care. And she has taken the message of reproductive rights throughout the country. We trust women. And when Congress passes a law that restores the reproductive freedoms of Roe, our President Joe Biden will sign it. And as the 2024 presidential campaign began to heat up, Vice President Harris stayed the course. When you look at current polling, the front runner for a Republican nomination is the former president, the 45th president. We will win the election. You we will, will win. win. We will win re-election. There is too much at stake and the American people know it. Even after President Biden's debate performance against former President Donald Trump, she stood by him. Look, Joe Biden is our nominee. We beat Trump once and we're going to beat him again. And President Biden stood by her. Folks, I know what a black job is. It's the vice president of the United States. But as President Biden drops out of the race, the focus is now on Vice President Harris. Will she be able to win the nomination and make history again?